Crow Scientist by Philea Peck, read by Miss Tuxhorn. Crow Scientist by Amplify Science from the fourth grade unit, Vision and Light. Here in the table of contents, we have the headings of each section of the book. On page four, a crow is watching you. Page six, surviving in an environment with humans. Page eight, what a crow sees. Page 10, investigating crows. 11, how scientists change variables. 12, changing faces. 14, what Marslu found out. And 15, more questions and more investigations. And last, on page 16, of course, we have the glossary. Now, this book follows the inquiry process of a scientist, so I recommend reading it from beginning to end instead of looking at the table of contents and just choosing a part. Because since we're following his scientific process, it makes more sense if we read it from beginning to end. A crow is watching you. You're going down the street, minding your own business. Then you see it. A crow perched on a sign, staring straight down at you. It watches with interest and almost seems to recognize you. That's not possible, though, is it? Can crows recognize humans? That's the question John Marsloof asked after years of, of observing crows. Marsloof is a wildlife biologist. Wildlife biologists study animals how they behave, and how they interact with their environment. For many crows, that environment is a busy city or town. Marsloof is especially interested in how crows interact with one very important part of their environment, humans. Marsloof says crows are fun to study because many people see them every day. Everyone knows what a crow is, he says. Crows have shiny black feathers and are about half a meter, one and a half feet long. They will eat anything from insects to eggs to scraps of food that humans throw in the trash. They can even catch and kill rats to eat. Unlike many animals, crows are able to survive in places where lots of humans live. Marsloof is curious about how crows manage to survive so well around humans. He wonders, what makes crows so successful in a city environment? How closely do they pay attention to humans? How does noticing humans help crows survive in their environment? Surviving in an environment with humans. You may not think of yourself as part of a crow's environment, but you are. Crows are very aware of you and are reacting to you says Marsloof. From a crow's point of view, humans can be dangerous. Some humans chase crows away from gardens and farms or even hunt crows. Other humans feed crows, and even though crows can find plenty of food on their own. Of course, many humans simply leave crows alone. Different humans may treat crows in very different ways. Humans are part of the environment for many crows. Crows can get food from humans. They sometimes eat seeds that humans plant in fields and trash that humans throw away. On the other hand, humans can be dangerous to crows. Some humans hunt crows. Marsloof noticed that crows seem to treat humans in different ways too. He noticed crows scolding some humans. When, cro when crows scold, they call loudly, flap their wings, and sometimes even dive and chase. Marsloof noticed that crows often scolded the wildlife biologists he worked with. He wondered if that was because the biologists on his team often trap the crows. Trapping crows lets biologists observe them closely and mark them with tags. The biologists don't harm the crows, and they let them go afterward, but to a crow, being trapped seems like an attack. 
Marsloof noticed that crows often scolded biologists who had trapped them. He wondered whether the crows could actually recognize the biologists. When a crow calls loudly and tries to chase a person away, it is called scolding. What a crow sees. A crow has to see someone in order to recognize that person. Like many other animals, crows rely on vision to find food and avoid danger. Light reflects off objects such as humans in the environment, and some of that light enters a crow's eyes through the pupils. The light carries information about the environment. Light receptors in a crow's eyes respond to the light and send information to the crow's brain. The brain processes the information and forms an image. Then it compares that image to memories and decides what to do next. Light, which provides information about the environment, enters eye through the pupil. So light comes in through the pupil. Receptors respond to the light. There we have the yellow area, which represents the light receptors. Information goes to the brain, from the light receptors to the brain, and the brain processes information. Investigating crows. To find out whether crows can recognize humans, Marsleaf chose to focus on faces. He decided to investigate this question. Will crows recognize the face of a dangerous human? Marsleaf thought of a way to test this. First, a human would have to trap some crows so that the crows would think the human was dangerous. Later, that same human would walk by the same crows. If the crows scolded the humans, that would give Marsloaf evidence that the crows remembered that particular human was dangerous. But how could Marsloaf know, know for sure it was the human's face the crows recognized? Maybe they could smell the human or notice the human's clothing or way of walking. To make sure he was testing just the face Marsloof made masks of human faces. That way, he could be sure the face was the only variable he changed. Marsloof made masks to use in his investigation. How Scientists Change Variables A variable is something that can change in an investigation. Scientists set up investigations so that they are only changing one variable at a time. By changing only one variable at a time, scientists can tell how that variable affects how the investigation turns out. If scientists changed too many things at once, they wouldn't be able to learn from their investigation. They couldn't tell which variable affected how the investigation turned out. In Marsloof's Crow investigation, the mask would be the only variable he changed. He would keep everything else the same, including smell, clothing, and way of walking. He made masks of two different faces, face one and face two. Marsloof and his team wore both masks where their crows could see them. They wore face one to trap the crows so that the crows would think face one was a dangerous human. When they wore face two, they ignored the crows and did not trap them. One of the biologists Mar on Marsloof's team wears face one while trapping a crow. Changing faces. Once Marsloof's team had introduced the crows to face one and two, they were ready to find out whether the crows would react differently to the two faces. A person walked past the crows wearing mask or face one. The crows scolded face one and even swooped down to try and chase face one away. Then the person walked into a building where the crows couldn't see him. The crows stopped scolding. He switched masks so that he was wearing face two. When he came out of the building wearing face two, the crows did not react. They did not scold face two at all. This crow is scolding and chasing a person wearing the mask of face one, the face that traps crows. 
Marsluf and his team repeated this investigation many times. They repeated it with different crows in different places. They repeated it with different masks. They observed how the crows reacted to each mask. Almost every time, the crows scolded the face they had learned was dangerous. Marsluf was able to figure out that the crows remembered faces because he ch changed only the masks in his investigation. If he had changed other things at the same time, he would not have been able to tell whether it was the masks that the crows were reacting to. The investigation gave Marslu evidence that crows learn, recognize, and react to human faces. The crows remembered the faces that trapped them. They scolded people wearing masks of those faces. Here is the same person wearing the mask of face two. The crows are not scolding him. What Marslu found out. Marsluf learned a lot about how crows survive in an environment filled with humans. Crows pay attention to the humans around them. Light reflecting off the faces carries information about that face. Some of the light enters a crow's eyes through the pupils. Light receptors respond to the light and send information to the brain. The brain compares the face to other faces in the crow's memory. Crows can remember which face means danger. The crow's brain uses its memories to guide the crow's next action. Recognizing dangerous faces help crows avoid dangerous humans and survive. Working with brain scientists, Marsluf made this image using a machine that can show the inside of a crow's head. The bright areas show where the crow's brain is responding to the sight of a human face that the crow recognizes. So here's the beak, here's the eyes, and here is the brain. More questions and more investigations. Marsluf and his team have done many other investigations about how crows interact with humans. They studied crows using machines that can make images of brain activity. They made lots of different masks and did tests with different crows in different places. In every investigation, Marsluf thought carefully about what information he needed and what variable he would change. While Marsluf's investigations answered his question about whether crows can recognize faces, they have also led him to ask more questions. Do crows learn about dangerous humans from other crows? How long do crows remember faces? What parts of a human face do, do crows recognize? Maybe Marsluf will be able to answer some of these questions in future investigations. In the meantime, if you see a crow, remember, it's not just looking back at you. It might even recognize your face. Glossary. Environment. All the living and non-living things in an area. Evidence. Information that supports an answer to a question. Interact. To affect one another. Investigate. To try to learn more about something. Investigation. An attempt to find out something. Observe. To use any of the five senses to gather information about something. Process. To change information from one form to another. Pupil. The hole that lets light into the eye. React. To do something because of some information or event. Receptor. A structure that responds to information coming in from the environment. Reflect. To cause light to bounce off a material. Respond. To change because of some information or event. Survive. To stay alive. Variable. Something that can change in an investigation. Vision. The ability to see.